So this is a desktop laser cutter and engraver from Gweek. This guy is 50 watts and it is a pretty impressive unit. And if you're looking at this guy, you're probably asking yourself one thing. How does this compare to the competition? Specifically, how does this compare to the Glowforge, which we have running right back there? In this video, we're gonna review this machine, but I wanna put it in context of the Glowforge, which is probably the most popular desktop laser cutter and engraver that is out there. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so we have eight different categories we're gonna compare these two machines with. So at the very end, we can give you an overall winner. And to start off, let's talk about price. This is probably the biggest difference between these two machines in that the Glowforge is a good bit more expensive. In this case, I am comparing the Glowforge Pro, which comes in just shy of $7,000. That is the highest end on their line. They have several that are lower. The Glowforge Pro is actually the closest to this weak cloud machine that I could find in terms of specs. So that's the one that we are going to be comparing. Coming over to the Gweek machine currently, this is 3,150 bucks. So this is half the price of the Glowforge Pro. And quick aside, I have no idea how to say this company's name. Gweek, Gweek, let's just call it the G machine from now on. So the winner in price is the G machine. Okay, next up, let's talk about something that may not be as obvious when you are comparing these machines, and that is the actual company. On the Glowforge side of things, it actually started as a Kickstarter, but the big part about it is they are actually US based, so they are based out of Seattle. So if you have support questions, just know that is who you're going to be dealing with. Also, the Glowforge is the only machine they offer other than the two other versions that is opposed to the G machine or GWEC. So this is basically their Glowforge competitor, but they also make industrial lasers, so they have the bigger 50 watt, 60 watt machines you might have seen from other manufacturers in the past and all the way up to the bigger machines. And the big benefit about that is they have all that manufacturing know-how that come from those higher end machines. Now, probably the negative is this is a overseas company based in China. And some of you might be cool with that. Some of you may not like that, but just know that is what you're going to be dealing with. So for a winner, I would actually give this a tie. I do the Glowforge is US based, but I also like the full product line that Gweek offers. Okay, so let's talk about the build. First off, things that are the same between both units. First off, they're nice overall, definitely nicer than those industrial style units. They look pretty good. They've got a glass top on both of them with nice hinges. Everything runs on linear rails and stepper motors. They both have honeycomb beds on the inside. So it gives you really good airflow underneath. All the wiring and everything looks really nice on the inside. And probably the most obvious is this big white button that is also on both machines. And after Glowforge started doing that, you definitely saw a button like this starting to show up on multiple machines after. Now, a few differences. On the pro side of things, for the G machine, the entire case is actually sheet metal versus the top being glass on the Glowforge and a hard plastic for the frame. The plastic is still really nice and actually feels really good, but this is just hard and it's gonna take a good beating. Now, the Glowforge has a pass-through, meaning a slot in the very front that you can push material through that is bigger than the Y distance on your machine. Now, this one also has a pull-out. This tray can completely come out. And this is nice because you can easily clean all the stuff that you cut out that might fall through the honeycomb. But the machine will not run if that is pulled out. Same with the lid, so that's a nice safety feature. But the best that I can tell, you can't really have this function as a pass-through like you can with the Glowforge. Now, they both have an internal cooling system. So with CO2 lasers, you typically have water cooling. So there's water being pumped around that laser tube as it's firing. With the bigger units, that is actually separate. So you have a full tank that is sometimes cool that then goes into your machine. But both of these, that is inside. And that's why they're a little bit wider than maybe you think they need to be. And the Glowforge has another thing that is internal to the unit itself, and that is the actual air compressor. So all of that is built in. You don't have to plug in extra wire. Now, while the G Machine doesn't have that air compressor built in, they do give you an external unit that is not only an air compressor, but is also a air filter. So I've got this ducted into the filter right now, and then it goes out from there. Now it's a little bit of a pain because you definitely have to have more space to set this thing up. You do get that added in air filter. Now the Glowforge does have an air filter that you can vent everything into, but it is over a thousand dollars additional purchase, while this one is just part of the unit. Now the air filter for the Glowforge is really nice. I can run it completely closed, meaning I'm not gonna have anything vented out. If I do the same thing with this one, the ceiling on this one isn't quite as good. You still probably want to have this vented out. Now the G machine is slightly bigger in terms of the max material that you can put inside. You can see the difference right here, but really it's 
not a huge difference between the two. And if I was gonna pick a winner on the build between both of these machines, I would give a slight edge to Glowforge, mainly because everything is internal. The fit and the finish feels a little bit nicer, even though this is like a rock solid unit and the whole thing is metal, I still would lean towards the Glowforge. Okay, so let's talk about laser power. Both of these are CO2 lasers, meaning there is a glass tube that shoots out a laser beam that gets bounced around and then gets focused right into the laser head that then goes into your material. The Gweek is 50 watts, while the Glowforge Pro is 45 watts, and then the cheaper units for the Glowforge drop down to 40 watts. Something a little goofy that both of these machines do is the actual glass tube rides on the gantry, meaning as this moves in the Y direction, the entire glass tube moves as well. What nice part about that is the beam isn't having to travel quite as far, but you definitely run into the risk of potentially cracking the glass tube as a result. My bigger CO2 machines, it just lives in the back and it's bounced around on the mirrors. But that is on both machines. Now the Glowforge one has some brackets that hold that glass tube in, and the G machine has this pretty much fully enclosed. So this glass tube just feels a lot safer. So the winner in terms of power would be the G machine because it's more powerful and I like the way that the glass tube is attached. So next up, let's talk about speed. So how fast are these units? Now, a big part about the speed is going to be about the wattage. So the higher power your laser, the faster that you can run it. But even with that, I have found the G machine to be faster, even if I'm running it at lower wattages. They spec this out as having a top speed of 600 millimeters per second and acceleration of 35 millimeters per second squared. Glowforge, you don't really know. They just give you values from zero to 4,000. So I'm not exactly sure what those are. And even searching around on the forums, people don't totally know what that means. So I thought the best way to test it was to do a real life test between the two machines. I did these two engraves of R2-D2. For the week, it was at 40% power at 20,000 millimeters per minute at 250 DPI. Now these images were the same size, but the Glowforge, you can only select certain DPI settings. So I actually dropped the DPI down to 225 for the Glowforge and I ran it at 100% power. And you can see that the G machine finished first, even though it had more lines to do because of that DPI. And it wasn't because the laser is stronger. Again, I was running it at 40% versus 100%. Now this was the max speed of the Glowforge and I was watching these two videos back. I think the max speed might be the same, but it seemed like the acceleration, both the stop and the start on the edges is what really gave the speed advantage to this guy. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of engraving, especially big engraving, you're gonna be able to get through those quicker if you're trying to batch out a bunch of different parts. And I did a cutting test as well. And the difference between the two machines is not as drastic. So I really think that's only gonna happen mostly on the engraving side of things. But in terms of a winner, it's gonna be the G machine. Now, I really didn't compare these in terms of actual performance because when you're looking at CO2 lasers, there's so many variables between the two. It's really gonna depend on how you have them set up. For instance, the wattage is gonna be different, so the 50 and the 45 watt, but also the type of focus you have set up with the lens. So you could have a longer focus or a shorter focus for either cutting or engraving. But I did wanna show you a quick comparison with a laser diode, and that's using my engraving and cutting test. So you can see this guy. So this is the standard engraving test that I do where I change speed and power. Now with the diodes, the max is 10,000 millimeters per second. And with this one, the lowest end is 12,500 millimeters per second. And this goes all the way up to 35,000 millimeters per second. And you can see at 100% power, we're gonna get a mark all the way through. And especially at slower speeds, the markings are going to go deeper. Now these machines are going to be way, way faster than your diodes because they can run faster and they have more power. Now the cutting test is gonna give you a much better example. Now we have speeds going all the way from 500 to 2,500 millimeters per minute from 10 to 100% power. And you can see we're getting cutting all the way up to 1250 millimeters per second, even down to 40% power. Now that's compared to currently the strongest laser diode that I have, and that is 20 watts, and that's either the X-Tool or the Atom Stack unit. And this is actually the X-Tool one where I wasn't running air assist, and at 90 and 100% power, I was only getting cutting all the way up to 350 millimeters per second. So again, this one is all the way up to 1250 millimeters per second. So when you step up to a CO2 machine, you're gonna get big improvements in terms of cutting as well as speed with engraving, plus all the features that you normally get like a fully enclosed box with air assist and an exhaust system. Now again, that's with a laser diode. Now let's jump back into comparing this with the Glowforge. Now one feature you're starting to find standard on all of these desktop style CO2 machines 
is a camera. And usually the cameras are right here on the top of the lid. That's the case for both the Glowforge and the G Machine. And those are nice because when you pull it into the software, you can take an image of your material and then you can move around whatever your artwork is and place it exactly where you wanna go. But the Glowforge takes it one step further because it's got an additional camera they use just for autofocus. So the accuracy of that one is a lot tighter and it allows you to autofocus to any material. So you pretty much don't have to worry about the thickness of the material because every single time the Glowforge is gonna find the right height and then start the job. That's opposed to this, and this might be my biggest negative to this machine because they do advertise this as autofocus, but what they really mean is their camera can read this QR code. So if you put this material in it, you run their software, it's automatically gonna see that you've got three millimeter MDF and then set the height as a result. Now the laser head does have a Z axis that will move up and down. And if you take the cover off of the laser head, you can see it moving, but it has no way to actually measure that thickness. So you always will need to know whatever the thickness is of your material and make sure and enter that in. So in terms of cameras, Glowforge is going to be the clear winner because it has true autofocus versus this guy. So next up, let's talk about software. With the G Machine, they have their own weak cloud that is web-based that allows you to connect to this machine. This machine has both Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and USB connections. But the nice part about their cloud software is it will download it directly to the machine and then you can run it. Or you can just hook your computer up directly to it and it works totally fine as well. Now, Glowforge also has their own online software, but that is completely web-based. And that probably is the biggest drawback with the Glowforge is the fact that you have to be connected online to the machine. It does all the processing on their servers, then it sends it to the machine and runs. Now, another big drawback with that is to get any type of features other than just importing your own graphics to their software, you're gonna have to upgrade to their pro plan, which is 50 bucks. So I was even trying to add in a little circle just to do some test cuts. And that was something you had to upgrade pro to get. Now the Glowforge software is really easy to use, especially if you've never used a laser before. It's really easy to get up and running. The Weak software is all right, it's clunky. You can tell it wasn't developed by a native English speaker, but the big positive about this machine is you can control it with Lightburn. Yay. And Lightburn is my favorite software I use to control all of my machines. So pretty much everything in my shop other than the Glowforge, I can run through Lightburn, which is incredible. And because of that, you really can tweak some of those settings. So just like we were talking about acceleration earlier, how this one might have a faster acceleration than the Glowforge. You're able to actually tweak that. You can change and adjust your settings to really fine tune it to your situation. It also allows me to run these test files for both cutting and engraving. And these files are actually updated version of the test files I've used for my diode lasers because this thing is a lot faster and a lot more powerful. And if you'd like to use these files yourself to figure out the best speeds and power to be able to cut through different materials, there's a link down in the description to download them. But based solely on the fact that this supports Lightburn, the winner for the software is going to be the G Machine. Now the final category is pretty subjective and it's ease of use. Now, while the G Machine is easy to use, their software is a little bit clunky, and then Lightburn definitely has a learning curve if you're brand new to it. That's opposed to the Glowforge, which is probably the easiest laser of any type that I've ever used. Now, that ease of use definitely comes with some limitations that we've already talked about, but I still find myself recommending Glowforges to people depending on their situation. So maybe you're coming to this and you're not in the tinkerer, you like to fool around with all these machines and upgrade them, but you have a business you're running, you want to engrave products, and you want to sell them. You really don't care about all the nuts and bolts. You just want something that's gonna do the job and you really don't have a learning curve to get there, then the Glowforge is going to be the winner in terms of ease of use. Now, if we're tallying everything up, we've got Glowforge at four and we have Week at five. You could definitely say the Week is the winner between the two, but those different categories might be weighed differently for you. Price might be your number one, so you didn't even need to see the other categories. This is half as expensive, so you're going with this machine. But just like we said, if we're running a business, ease of use might be your number one. You know you're going to make back the price difference because you're going to be able to sell materials faster because this guy has a lot shorter learning curve than this one. So my recommendation to you is basically to take all these facts and figures, figure out what you care about the most and then go that direction. And I would actually love to know for you, which one would you pick? Let me know down in the comments. Till next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.